chilly morning this morning. Looks like about six degrees. Six degrees this morning. Got the fire going in the workshop and in the greenhouse this morning. I lit a fire in the workshop today. I'm going to be puttering in there. We're not going to get much sun. We got a big snowstorm coming. Uh, conflicting reports. Yesterday it said uh, five to eight, and now it's uh, a foot coming tonight, and then five to eight tomorrow. So <laughs> I don't know what the weather report's going to be by the end of the day. So today will be the day to get the vehicles off the mountain. So I'm going to run to town, get a few things, uh, fill up my gas can so we have gas for the snowmobile and the quad and generator and stuff like that. Uh, we got tons of food, so we don't really need any of that. I just need some half and half and s some ice cream. A few things. I have a freaking winter storm watch and I want some ice cream, but it is what it is. So as soon as Mama's ready, we're going to take the black truck down, take that to town, and then come back up and we will take the red Jeep down the mountain. And we will leave the green Jeep here and try to go in and out with that for a little while. But if we get what they're calling for, I think uh, that'll be it. Take a look at the road first. I just want to see this before it gets covered with snow. Yeah, a little bit of ice, not too bad. Looks like when we head down, I hugged this left side. It looks like down there, there's a little bit of dirt. Shouldn't be too bad. Get this baby warmed up. What? Houston, we have a problem. Uh, That's not good. Pedal goes all the way to the floor. I saw the second that I started it, the brake light was on, and I thought that the emergency brake was on or something, but I no reason for it to be. Well, looks like we got a problem. We got a problem. Uh, I, I'm going to have you get in the driver's seat, and I'll tell you to pump the brake, and I'll see if we get a leak. Okay. Go ahead, hit the brake. Yep, her. There she is. Yeah. We got a leak in the line right at the joint it sucks but we're not in the middle of town or something you know i'd rather be stuck in the woods and in town you got that right mama Boy, you know, I absolutely hate working on vehicle stuff. Anything to do with nuts and bolts and wrenches. And to do it out here at six degrees and also be under the gun because we got a big storm coming. I gotta get more clothes on. It's nasty out here. <laughs> I've never seen you wear that before. I think I've had this. 25 years or so. I think I might have worn it once. <laughs> I don't like coveralls. They're a pain in the butt when you're going to take a crap. Yeah, you got to practically undress yourself, I guess. Yeah. I ain't going bare ass today, I'll tell you that. Boy, I know how much you hate doing stuff like this. You have no idea. Oh, but I do. <laughs> she does. <laughs> Especially when it's this cold. Oh, the tragedy on the mountain! Oh no! We could have died going down the mountain. We almost died! We don't get this brake line fixed, we'll be stuck on the mountain all winter. Uh, I don't know if we'll survive. No, will we survive? Will we survive? Going down the mountain with no brakes? I can see the thumbnails now, huh? <laughs> I got uneven ground I here to work with. 
Uh, I gotta get a wooden shingle into that so my jack don't tip over. I don't need that aggravation. Just trying to survive. Just trying to survive. Tragedy. Tragedy on the mountain. Seems no matter what the project or problem, he always fixes it with a piece of wood. <laughs> yeah, I hate nuts and bolts. It's his MacGyver act. <laughs> I will say this suit's pretty warm. Well, that's good. I figured I'd take the tire off, hoping it would give me better access for my attempt at fixing the brake line. And I say attempt because I don't know what the hell I'm doing. But it's got to be done, and I'm giving it a go. Well, it looks like the leak is right where the nut is, or even inside there. So trying to do like a temporary patch is out of the question. I'm going to see about pulling the brake line. Things look pretty rusted. It might make it worse. I don't know. This is not my thing. <laughs> so... Give it a old square to the PB blaster. <laughs> it would be sweet if I could take it off and get to the pot store and get it fixed today because we had a lot of snow coming. I know if we don't get the truck down today, it's probably going to stay gonna here. Stay here. Yeah. And. <laughs> Tildy says, <laughs> let me at it. Put in or two cents. Yeah, do it. All right, I got it to turn. Yes. So this is the brake line that was on there. It bends in a million different ways. So I went to the parts store. I was hoping they would just have something like this, but <laughs> they didn't. And, uh... I, I, I measured all the way down and what they had was about three inches too short or uh, about 20 inches too long. <laughs> and I know that you can do cut to fit and you have to flare them and all of that stuff. But like I said, this is not my forte. I'm kind of under the gun. It's going to start snowing probably in a few hours. Hopefully it'll hold off longer than that because I got other things to do. So I got, I got a, a one that's shorter, I'm going to do less bends, and I'd have it connected and uh, get it tightened down and then get some brake fluid in it and breed the brake line and do all that jazz and hopefully we'll have it fixed. At least a temporary fix, you know. So we got to get some of these vehicles off the mountain because this, this snowstorm just, they keep calling for more and more snow. So who knows? But, so far so good, we've stayed in pretty good spirits, you know, just doing our thing, getting it done, <laughs> that's all you can do. Oh, poor Frank, can't go out, the snow's too deep. Ah, the bitty boy, oh, him. We're really getting slammed now. I kept the green Jeep up here because I don't have any place to park it. So that'll be here for a while, I think. <laughs> the snow has been blowing sideways. So there's not much left here. It's just been blowing out. But I've got my tall boots on here and the snow is almost to the top of them. It is crazy and the storm ain't over. Yeah. <sighs> A little peanut butter paddle that was sent to us by one of our subscribers. Okay, chickadees. There you go. There's a lot of snow out here, folks. Wow. Put up the old bird feeder this morning. Give them a little bit of extra. We had some of the evening gross beaks come in, so wanted to make sure there was enough food for them out there.
Gotta keep the peanut gallery happy. Well, the storm is winding down now, I think. Uh, it's gotten a little bit brighter out. The snow is still coming down, though. So we're going to just start doing some cleanup. And for what it's worth, I'm going to get the snow off of the solar panels. And maybe they'll get a little bit of light on them. <laughs> no sun. But there's a lot of snow out here, folks. Jeepers. <laughs> Look. Up to my freaking knees. The heat from the greenhouse is melting the snow, and I really hoped that that would slide off once it got heated, but it's not. It's just coming down and forming a nice dam. I'm gonna go in there and check my fire and try and get those solar panels cleaned up. Warm in here, 65 in here. It's still kind of sunny in here. <laughs> Why that Swiss chard? That's just that's the thing to grow in the cold. Yeah. So I got my other bed in there, and I started cleaning out some of the tomato plants. Those Chadwicks I was telling you about, they are still just producing real well. In fact, it's still blossoming. <laughs> so I pulled a few cuttings off of them and I put them in the ground about five days ago and they haven't shown any signs of wilting or anything and I'm pretty certain that they will take root and grow some more Chadwicks and that was another cutting and this was an Amish paste tomato and I cut it I cut it down there see and that right there and that's some new life springing from it it was Amish paste with good tomatoes. So this bed here that you saw me put in, it's got some growth. Some of the little lettuce. They're growing very, very, very slow. You don't notice much change in anything in a day's time. A few little beets there. Yeah, some spinach coming up there. <laughs> The storm is winding down now, so we're getting started on the cleanup. This was the first major storm of the season, and it was a doozy, dropping two feet of snow overnight. We're just grateful it was powder that's easy to move. wide enough for us to maneuver with our snowshoes getting them on and off here so we don't have to try to walk up on the porch with them and I made this path wide enough for JC to pull the jet sled because sometimes it's pretty tough you know with the deep snow trying to carry those buckets dragging in the snow It'll be a little easier on the the jet sled sometimes oh you, know, oh, yeah, you got a ramp is that for Frankie yeah. Yeah, I kind of ramped up the snow so that we can just snowshoe up and out. Frankie doesn't like the deep snow, and uh, he's getting old, you know. So we got to pack his little poopy trails and stuff, but that's okay. Got to do what we can for you, old man. Well, you're doing a good job. Good exercise. It is. So we got all of the shoveling done yesterday. Got everything dug out, and now we're going to head down the mountain. 
take the ranger down for the first time, first time of the year, and uh, go dig out the Jeep. I have no idea what to expect down there. At the end of the road where it meets the pavement, whether or not the town is just going to plow it shut, I don't know what we're going to, what to expect down there. But huh, here we go, down the mountain. Oh, we got shovels, we got a broom, we got a chainsaw. We should be good to go. There's a lot of snow out here, but it sure is pretty when we make the first tracks in it. Check it out. You know, people often ask why we chose to live out here, and the way I figure it, if they have to ask that question, well, they'll certainly never understand my answer. My childhood dream was to live a life of adventure, so that's what I do, and it's what I've always done. But adventure brings adversity, and how you handle adversity will dictate what the outcome will be. Struggles are thrown at us every day, and we just roll with them. We work as a team and keep on keeping on. Life is what you make of it, and it's as simple as that. Well, we got to where the Jeep is parked and uh, nothing was plowed. <laughs> Look at this. The Jeep is snowed in, man. <laughs> That's crazy. But the Ranger pulled in off the road, no problem. <laughs> you need longer legs. Almost to my butt. <laughs> Mama. <laughs> so we're not going to be able to get the Jeep out of here, but we'll get it cleaned off anyway. This is a first. I've never seen this all snowed in like this. <laughs> oh well. <laughs> you can see even with the tracks we are dragging our undercarriage there. Yeah, a lot of snow. I think that's all we need is the eggs for now. Grab me a couple of those yinglings. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> the water is pretty clear. Sometimes it darkens up a little bit. But for the most part, it runs nice and clear. So now that I got the water done, I got firewood. I think I get the ranger out and fill the back with that and get everything filled up. Got a lot of rain coming, might as well do it today, get it done. You know, wintering it up here on the mountain uh, is certainly more challenging than the rest of the time of the year. Uh, the only thing that's easier is refrigeration. <laughs> but, you know, you got to have the right mindset to live out here like this. And when I was a kid, I read books and magazines and watched movies of the mountain men and, you know, people out living in the woods. And their life was challenging and dangerous. And that's what 
attracted me to wanting to live like this. And, and we accept the challenges and, and just roll with it. Because you got to know that no matter who you are or rich, how rich and famous you are or how you live, there's always different challenges and upsets in your life. So we have different upsets than normal folks. But we roll with them. You know, like the issues with the vehicles right now. Yeah, it's a pain in the butt. But you can complain and piss and moan and make tragedy videos about it or just roll with it and get the job done. You know, uh, a lot has changed with this whole off-grid living now. You know, when I, I went off-grid in 1984 when I was 21 years old and I had you know, nothing. I didn't have an ATV, I didn't have LED lights, I didn't have a cell phone, I didn't have an internet, and I, I didn't have any money. I, you know, it was, it was struggling and it was called roughing it then. And now, somewhere along the way, it's become so trendy. And... A lot of times what I see on the sidebar when I'm checking my videos on, on YouTube and the thumbnails where everything's a tragedy, everyone's stuck, everyone's rolled over, everyone's tipped over, they don't know if they're going to survive the rain, they don't know if they're going to survive the wind. Will I survive a Canadian winter? It's always worried about surviving. Um, I mean, it's kind of disheartening to see that, see that they've made such a mockery of this kind of a lifestyle. And then you get the guys that just put their their wife's boobs and butt and every darn thumbnail, you know, to attract people to click on it, and they do. Um, you know, I've taken a wholesome, wholesome lifestyle and made a circus out of it. And it's saddening to see that. You know, there's some good legitimate outdoor people on YouTube now and uh but you know all the reality shows and you know some of the stuff i seen about the, like alaska bush people and stuff like that it was just a circus i mean i don't know i i refused almost a half a million dollars by the networks because um i don't want them to turn my wholesome lifestyle into that circus where everything's a tragedy and i don't know i don't want any part of it so we share our life with the folks that want to watch the, this journey of ours. And, you know, we don't make stuff up. Uh, we roll with all of the changes. And like this this year, you know, this year with all the medical challenges and everything, yeah, it's been tough, but we kept on rolling with it, and we're still rolling. Yeah, man. In fact, I got some good news yesterday. I had... Uh, most of you know that have been following me. Um, I was dealing with cancer and I had surgery uh, back in June. And I just had my six-month post-surgery blood work done. I got the results yesterday and it's showing no signs of cancer. So the three-month one come out perfect. The six-month one is behind me now. And I'm going to get my blood work done uh, every three months for the first year. So it doesn't mean yeah, I'm in the clear, but it does say that I'm off to a good start. So that's awesome. I'm going to get this firewood in there and just keep on pecking away at my chores before all this rain comes and turns the mountain into mush. I do get tired of all the off-grid tragedies, you know. Where <laughs> It's like one guy, it's all off-grid, 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 and then... See a video where he's crying the freaking blues because his generator won't start and now he doesn't have any electricity. <laughs> I don't know, I don't, I don't make any sense of it. Okay. Yeah, we get to fire with my oh boy. Well, now that I got all the water done and all the firewood done, uh, now I'm going to go and try and finish fixing my snowmobile.
And I swapped out the ignition switch last winter. I had a problem with it. So I swapped that out and got her going and it's been fine. And then this fall, I got the battery charged up and uh, fired it up and got everything ready and parked it here. And then I came out because I was going to run it down the road and it was dead. So I thought the battery was garbage, you know. So I topped that back off. And even with the charger on it, I wasn't getting any juice. And I know, and there's no freaking way that the ignition switch, you know, failed again. But took it all apart, and beneath the switch, a bunch of wires come in, and one of those little tabs was all buggered up. So swapped that out, fixed that, and uh, I just picked up a new battery because it's got the same battery in it from when I bought it back in 2017, and I don't know how old the battery was then. I'll swap that out, and hopefully she'll fire up. This has yeah. been an interesting week for sure, <laughs> to say the least. First the brake line, and then, and then the truck broke down, it wouldn't start, and then everything was buried, <laughs> and then this crapped out. There were a few other struggles, but like I say, you know, you can piss and moan about it, but it ain't going to change anything. It's going to make it worse. So we take the projects one at a time and getting them done. And, you know, there's some pride that comes with that. It's just handling it, you know. You don't move out into the woods and expect people to do everything for you. You get it done, you know. And that's what we're doing. So I've been taking care of the chores. Mama's been inside. She's making a spaghetti sauce. Gonna simmer on the kitchen queen. Getting a turkey ready to cook for tomorrow. <laughs> Getting stuff done, man. Yeah. So I'm really hoping that this fixing that wire and getting this new battery on here is gonna take care of the problem. Because this is our lifeline out of here. You know, we have the Polaris Ranger on tracks, and we have this. And then, you know, we got chains on the other vehicle for when things, when the whole mountain's covered with ice. Uh, but, like, in the conditions right now, if something happens with the Ranger, this is the life, lifeline out of here. And with this broken down, it, it puts us in a tight situation you know so we don't want to be there so we're getting it we're getting it done man well we're gonna give it the old test choke on make sure that's off here we go Well, what a difference a day makes. Yesterday we were up to our knees in snow, and today it's mild, it's been raining, raining hard through the night, the snow is disappearing. Look what it's doing to the road. It's supposed to turn to the teens tonight and tomorrow. This is going to freeze up solid, it's going to be one bobsled run all the way down the mountain. It'll be 1.6 miles of ice. <laughs> but that's all right. We've seen this before, and we are ready to handle it. What do you think, Mom? Is it worth the trouble? <laughs> what trouble? <laughs> Frankie and the boss out walking in the woods, living life happy and free. Tracks in the snow everywhere they go, there's a pokey way up in that tree. A beaver built a pond where they have some fun, taking life a day at a time. Best friends until the end, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss, Frankie and the boss.